The following presentation is rated TV PG. moments in the history of every nation when men must be prepared to sacrifice their lives for freedom. America had its Alamo, Great Britain had its Dunkirk, France had its Cameroon, and now it's Dien Bien Phu. In the faraway jungles of Indochina, deep in an isolated valley surrounded by red-controlled territory, the French built the fortress of Dien Bien Phu. It was a calculated risk designed to bring into the open the Viet Minh Reds, who were trying to conquer their country for international communism. Five months passed, and then suddenly on March 13th, 1954, Madeleine to command post Junon. Do you hear me? Over. Captain. This is Captain Dobley. Nepam fire bomb attack effective. Enemy has fallen back to regroup. Tell the colonel, I believe, full scale assault has finally begun. I'm sending prisoner down for interrogation. Over. Say all the prisoners taken at Madeleine were native Anamites, huh? That's right, sir. All are natives except this one. He's Chinese. And here's the pistol we found on him. Well, now we're getting someplace. A red Chinese from Beiping and a gun from Moscow. The complexion of our war is changing now that Mao and Malenkov are interested in our little valley. Lieutenant of the Chinese Red Army attached to the Viet Minh 17th anti-aircraft. Anti-aircraft? That's something new. Made in China, I presume. Made in Russia. Russia? Oh, this Russian generosity. Out of goodness of the heart to free a neighbor, huh? Yes. To free a neighbor from any hope of democracy to turn all Indochina into a Chinese and Russian slave mill, producing for conquest. But it will deceive no one. All Asia will soon learn the truth, will learn your motives. They'll learn no capitalist lies, not from this fort. 
In a few days, no one will be alive to tell them. You're completely surrounded, so it matters not what I say. General Giap has four divisions, 40,000 men encircling you. He has plenty of ammunition. You'll be wiped out. Oh, I, I think he is lying, Colonel. No, he does not lie, Bonnie. But we have enough to put up a fight. You have nothing. A mere 12,100 men and 12 light tanks. How do you know those figures? Everybody knows them. Those figures, sir, could have only come from inside the fort. We can't fight two enemies. No, we can't. Do what you must, Riviere. And as for you, my friend, we shall be ready, you can be sure. But should we lose, the whole world will still know that our enemies were not nationalists, but conquerors for communism. And you will find that the dead, too, can speak, often more loudly than the living. Take them away. Now locate the traitor and get rid of him. Hoi la! Release him, he has no place to go. You still will not admit you engage in espionage? I told my men the truth. You told them the truth was in those hills, not in this fort. Do you still believe that? I do. Then what are you doing here? You should be with General Giap. I wish I was. What are they going to do with me? Do with you? <laughs> Lieutenant, you're simply going to renew your membership in the party. Lieutenant, your comrades are waiting for you. Wait a minute. Set me down someplace. I can't jump. I'm surprised, Lieutenant. You learn to walk. And when you join the party, you learn to crawl. I've changed my mind. Listen to me. No, please, take me back. I don't want to be with them. I told you I've changed my mind. Well, we didn't change ours. Now you'll be where you belong. Ah! 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 Tell the operator to radio Ching in Fu. Operation Rotten Apple accomplished. And from this information, we may be sure that the siege of Bien Bien Fu has finally begun. The odds are four to one against us, but the situation is far from hopeless. To succeed, we must be ready. Earlier today, I asked every one of you to prepare your minimum needs in equipment and personnel. I shall study them and make the requests of Hanoi accordingly. Now then, here is where the attacks began this morning. How many men are holding Madeleine tonight, Captain Darbley? None, I hope, sir. <laughs> Actually, about a thousand. I need uh, added personnel. We shall see that your sister is in good hands. Give your request to Major Bonnet. Now then, Isabelle is next. Lieutenant Dujon, I hope Captain Pliant's young lady is not too demanding. Except for a little powder. She has all she needs. What do you say for Lisette, Major Lamoureux? Does she require support? Constantly. I'm forever broke. <laughs> and now, Angelique. You need more men, Major Flandre? I don't. But I can't speak for Madame. Very well. There we have our strong points on the first day of attack. Now then, Yes, Lieutenant Robert. This is just right, sir. On the disposition of the informer, Lieutenant Park. Mm -hmm. Good. Now the barrel is clean. We've got rid of the bad one. Now let's get some good ones.
A new radio to Hanoi for reinforcements. Request four more photographs. To be brought in person by their owners. The Colonel requests four volunteer officers. Four volunteer officers for the MBM first strong points. Transmit to Paris. of deputies ought to ban parades. I despise them. Real soldiers don't strut about with empty guns, dressed and trimmed like Christmas trees in times like this. Still the same old thing, eh, Bertrand? You're more a veteran than half the others. Veteran of what? A German prison camp for two years. An officer who's never seen a single day's action. You try? I sat. I sat and saw the enemy in these cafes in the Tuileries in Notre Dame. Saw my parents cut down and murdered and had no gun to lift. Since he is in Geneva, I thought you might want to see it. Four officers for Dien Bien Phu. Shall I forward it to the Colonel? The Colonel? Oh, yes, of course, he must see it. I'll do so at once. Jardin. One change. Make it read three officers requested instead of four. Three? What about the fourth officer? I am the fourth officer. You can't. I already have. I am in temporary command here. Yen Bien Phu asked for volunteers. I selected Captain Guy Bertrand. He's not only the most reliable man we have, but the most fearsome, the most brave, and the most dissatisfied. A change of climate may work wonders. Do you object to the choice? Bertrand, don't be a fool. You have done your share. You have a job to do here. This? Dictating memorandums? Renewing requisitions for paper clips. Marching in parades. Someone must do it. Make out papers for my immediate transfer and that request forwarded to Geneva as corrected. If you insist. Jardin, it's an order. Yes. Captain Jean Calot, French headquarters, Baden-Baden. Lieutenant Heinrich Hellemann, Morocco. Lieutenant André Maupin, Geneva. <laughs> We've been promoted to civilians. And don't worry. As soon as we pass neutral territory, we'll all be demoted again. Uh, we'd better hustle into line. They're preparing to take off.
Captain Berton. Well, that does it. 104 passengers for Hanoi. Not too pretty far from home, Captain. 6,000 miles far. A couple of days will be 12,000 miles. But you know, in a way, it's not like leaving home at all. I remember when I was at Randolph, I used to go over to the Alamo and walk around. You know the Alamo? I've read about it. Well, I used to walk around. Think what it would have meant if we'd have had planes in those days. So we could have dropped some men and stuff to Davy Crockett and the boys. I just figured I was just daydreaming. But here I am getting my chance to help the Alamo, and, well, that's good enough for me. I can assure you that's more than good enough for me, too. Prepare for flight. Yes, sir. <laughs> Listen to this. 8,000 red casualties in two weeks. I've never killed a man. At St. Cyr, we pretended. Have you ever killed a man? Only on paper. Did you fight the Germans, Captain Bertrand? Constantly. To get a decent meal in the prison camp. What about you, Lieutenant Hellman? You a veteran? Yes. Did you see much action? I was in the Africa Corps, General Romo. I saw quite a bit of action. I... I didn't know. Lieutenant Hellman hasn't told you all the action he's seen. Why don't you tell him, Lieutenant? Lieutenant Hellman is too modest. I am carrying his record. After the war, he fought for France, and he saved hundreds of French lives. That's exactly what I would like to do. But I should think you have had enough fighting. You know, that's exactly what somebody else said to me the other day, after I volunteered. Somebody in French Morocco. Monsieur? Would you tell Mademoiselle that I must speak to her? I'm sorry, Monsieur. She wishes to see no one. Tell her it's Lieutenant Heldman. I'm leaving in the morning. Yes, she knows, but she has gone to bed. I see. I'm sorry, Monsieur. Yes. Good night. Good night, Monsieur. did you do it? Why? Your five years were almost up. You said you were through. We'd get married, go to France. I thought you would understand. I don't understand. What are you trying to prove always? Everyone knows you were in the Africa Corps against your will. Everyone knows that you hated the Nazis. Why must you keep fighting wars? I fight wars because there's a war inside me. One that I have to win. Don't you see, Jacqueline? I must do it just this once more. And then everything will be all right. Do you understand? I don't know. I'm... Yes, Heinrich. I do understand. Kiss me, Heinrich. Kiss me, good boy.
Captain Callow. I was just thinking. I know what you've been thinking. You've been thinking, why did Callow volunteer? He doesn't seem the type. You're right, I'm not. I'm 40 and I'm flabby and I've got calluses where I sit. It's my wife. She's ambitious for me. She wants me to be general of the armies one day, ordering vast pincer movements. Whatever one orders when one is general of the armies. She dreams of entertaining cabinet ministers, bishops, and assorted maharajas. She's so pretty, and I love her. So I always volunteer for better jobs. I never get them. This time they fooled me. You needn't wait, Herr Schmidt. Jordan will drive me home. And so, gentlemen, you understand why I must ask for a volunteers. I volunteer. Count me in. Major Jordan? I, too, volunteer. And you, Captain Carlo? I volunteer, of course. What did I volunteer for? Indochina. Darling, I haven't much time. What? It's important. Let me in. <laughs> Don't be naughty. Jean, let me put something on. I have some bad news for you. I volunteered for Indochina. I leave tomorrow. No. No, Jean, you can't. I thought you'd be pleased. I did it for you. For us. But Indochina. It'll be what you've always wanted. I'll get promoted, you'll see. And I get more pay. You can go to the village and live with my mother. It's only you I'm worried about. Ah, uh, Jean, I'll do anything. I'll stay in the village. I'll wait. I'll be proud. Oh, I am proud, Jean. It's just that. Please don't, darling. It's just that I'll miss you so. <laughs> Do you think we'll be held up in Hanoi very long? I hope so. I have a friend there. Don't worry. You'll get to Dien Bien Phu soon enough, Mopan. I can just see my mother's face when she hears. She's expecting me in St. Moritz this weekend. You see, I was in Geneva with the French delegation, working in the League of Nations building, when I heard a phone call from St. Moritz. Mother, how are you? Fine. When did you arrive? Oh, just this morning. Oh, I can't tell you how lovely it is. I'm sure it must be very lovely. You'll have good ski. What? I said you must take a leave. I'm expecting you. I promise, the first weekend. The first weekend? Well, it could be any time. Now, you come at once. Mother, listen to me. I'm busy. I have to take a message to Colonel Geoffrier. It's very important. It's from Indochina. Oh, let someone else take it to him. The snow is just wonderful. Perfectly hard. I'm glad the snow is hard. Then I'll reserve your room for Saturday. Mother, I have to go. I'll call you tonight. Goodbye. Yes, Mother, I love you. Goodbye. The communists come here mouthing pious statements about peace and dripping with blood. Pham Van Dong, foreign minister of the rebels surrounding the NBN Fu. Chu En Lai, premier and foreign minister of Red China. Chu seems to bristle with confidence as he leaves his plane. He's waving to his delegates. And now Chu En Lai and the foreign minister of Indochina are greeting each other with Gromyko of Russia behind them, as always. 
All eyes are turned to the last plane and its powerful passenger. Molotov of Russia. He and his satellites have a stranglehold on Indochina and perhaps on the entire Far East. Observers believe these communists will dominate the critical Geneva Conference and all conferences to follow... That's when I made up my mind, seeing those communists so cocky, coming to Geneva to browbeat us, believing we are weak and afraid. That's how I'm going to the NBN Fu instead of St. Moritz. Anyway, it's one place my mother can't find me. <laughs> She's very sweet, actually. Only very determined, also. You only have to look at her to see that. I have a picture of her. We were sent ahead with my luggage. Why was our luggage sent ahead? Well, I imagine there won't be much time to unload when we get off the plane. They've zeroed their artillery on the main airstrip. I hope it all gets there safely. Get a move on it! Get those crates out of here! Save as much luggage as you can! That so-called you want about being a gendarme, but after three years directing traffic in the Place de la Concorde, I decided it was too dangerous. So. I enlisted in the Legion. But out here, the weather right suit, you've got a chance. <laughs> but a Paris taxi never misses. Oh. Say, that's not bad, huh? I wonder what they'll be like, sir. The men following this luggage. What they'll be like? Huh. Sergeant, that should not be too difficult. Here we have Lieutenant Maupin's mother or his aunt, decked out like a showcase in the Rue de la Paix. He'll be rich one day. No other women? <laughs> no. I'll bet his mother sees to that. Ah, Napoleon. And straight from saint Cyr, they never tell him about Waterloo. Only Austerlitz. Who have we here? Uh, Captain Callow, sir. A Bible. A solid, sturdy provincial. The backbone of France, losing his hair. Probably trying to hold on to a younger wife, who is extravagant and frivolous. Ah, and beautiful, Madame Emma Bovary and husband. Now, this is interesting. Lieutenant Heldman, a German name, a veteran and a hero. Sensitive, too. Who would send a paper-bound girder to Dien Bien Phu? And the girl is all French. The man has a problem. Captain Guy Bertrand. Stubbs to a prize fight. A poker deck. Ah, in his clothes. Yes, his clothes need mending. A bachelor. A bachelor whose lady love still wears a wedding ring. I wonder whose wedding ring. This has promise. Gather up the pictures, Robert. We may as well make our women feel at home. Yes, sir. Here you are. Adrienne? Jacqueline. Simon. And Giselle, in the northwest corner. Another week like the last, then you'll have to take them all down again. The new men have arrived yet? Only their women, sir. They shouldn't be far behind. Oh, what does the new crop look like this time? Oh. <laughs> Uh, Giselle. What is my wife doing here? Where did you find her picture? Why, I... We... Uh, the lieutenant found it on the floor. Perhaps you dropped it. We'll remove it at once. Never mind. Looks to 
you mean, sir, like all the fighting won't be outside the fort when the reinforcements arrive. <laughs> After 28 days of continuous pressure on all sides, we had to abandon the landing fields outside the fort. Yes, gentlemen, we've lost the airstrips. The Reds are now dug in 800 yards from the command post. From this moment on, all entry into Jam Jam Fu can only be made by parachute. That is the dropping area. All we have left, one square mile. Not very much, but enough. Gentlemen, I don't want to minimize the risks. It'll be the most difficult precision jump in history, and the most dangerous. There will be artillery and mortar fire from four directions. Near the ground, there will be machine gun and small arms fire. A hundred things can go wrong. Bad timing, plane damage, unpredictable winds. Have you ever tried to drop a handful of coins on a handkerchief? There are your percentages. You all volunteered to go to Dien Bien Phu. You didn't volunteer to go this way. We cannot hold you to your original offer. It's up to you. If you change your mind, you'll be reassigned elsewhere without prejudice. If you want to take the chance of jumping, you'll leave tonight. What's your answer? I'll jump. I'll jump too. Yes. You'll be at the Bakmai Airport tonight at 10 o'clock in combat uniform. Thank you. And good luck. Well, we've got a whole day. Let's make use of it. go, Giselle. One day in three years. Sometimes a day can be a lifetime. I read once of certain types of butterflies that live their entire life in a single day. Born in the morning, mature in the afternoon, and dead by nightfall. It's not enough for me, Guy. Nor for me. I don't know what lies ahead. But this I believe. If I can help it, nightfall will never come. Au revoir, my darling. jump, you will be falling about 125 miles an hour. Give yourself four seconds for the chute to open. It will open by itself. But if it does not, pull hard at the ring of the ripcord on your chest. It will open an emergency chute in two seconds. Is that clear? You gentlemen will have company out there. Lieutenant Fami is jumping with you. If you're in a hurry, Captain, that's a good way to get down ahead of your parachute. Buckle it. All right. Any questions? Sir. Yes? How do we know we'll drop in the right place? You don't. You may even wind up as a reinforcement for General Giap. But if you find the air currents begin to blow you into the red lines, you can put on the brakes by pulling the strings left or right. Does anyone ever freeze? 
Men who have jumped 100 times freeze. If you get stuck, our dispatcher will give you a bit of encouragement. You have a half hour. Take it easy. You're scheduled to make three passes. You're going out in sticks of 10, 10, and 5. Why don't we drop all together? Drop zone's too small. We're not over it long enough to let everyone out at once. So don't get nervous if we have to fly around a bit. I know you're all anxious to unpack in a nice, cool trench. Don't worry, we'll get you there. Most of you, anyway. I tell you, if I had my way, I would do away with both the French and the Reds. Why are you fighting for the French, then? Ah, oh, Captain, do not misunderstand me. The French we want for a friend, but not for a master. We want no master. We want what you have, freedom. The intelligent Vietnamese do not trust the Reds. The Reds speak of Asia for the Asiatics. They mean Asia for the communists. But the French, they have learned. They will give us democracy. I trust the word of Voltaire and Rousseau over Lenin and Stalin, Captain. That is why I fight for the French. What happened? All right! First get ready! Hook up! Close it up and stand at the door! We are approaching Tian Pian Phu! Not a sound! I think we got them flat-footed. All right, go. That was easy. Let's get the rest down before they wake up. in a chair. All right. 
chief has promised that these Thai tribesmen will help us to escape, huh? Oh. He has told me there is still one route open. And I tell you, sir, we have no choice but to take it. We are greatly outnumbered. They have brought up heavy artillery. We can no longer resist effectively. But we are resisting. And the monsoon will stop movement of the enemy reserves. The monsoon? Shh. Where is it, huh? Two weeks ago, I suggested we abandon this fort by airlift. Now we have no airlift. Fortunately, we can still escape on foot. Major, there is a time to run and a time to stand. This time, before the communists, before the entire world, let us stand, whatever the outcome may be. Have the patrol return our Thai friend to his people. If we need him, we'll come to him. Well, it may be too late by then. We'll take our chances, Major. Captain Bertrand, sir. Reporting for duty. I brought in the officer replacement from Paris on tonight's drop. It's good to see you. We'll talk in my office. That'll be all for now. Now I know why that photograph is here. Is that why you volunteered, Captain? I volunteered because I was needed. <laughs> but since you were in Hanoi, you saw her? I saw her. Then no doubt asked her to leave me? There was no need to ask her to leave you, since you left her years ago. Why do you drag her after you, Paris to Saigon, Saigon to Hanoi? You seem extremely well informed as to my family life, Captain. Informed enough to know you haven't slept in the same room with her for five years. Why do you keep her tight to you when you don't love her? As a frontispiece for your army ambitions? Why are you afraid to let her go? A scandal? A blot on your career? What do you want of her? I must tell you, Captain, that your concern about Giselle fails to move me. I am not interested in her opinions or desires or in yours. I shall continue to do as I wish with her. And I shall continue to regard you as the intruder. When you bothered us in Paris, I removed her. If you persist in bothering us here, I will remove you. Is that clear, Captain? Only one thing is clear. Gentlemen, the Colonel is waiting. Dressed up for emergency assignment. Strong point Madeleine is under heavy attack. Captain Darby needs help. I'm taking an Algerian company to him. He's supposed to hold. But if he can't, I'm to help him pull out. You'll do all right, Andre. It's no different than Saint Cyr. Except the bullets are real. Just remember what you've been taught. You'll get there and get back. And when you do get back, you'll have enough stories to bore your children for years. Good luck, Andre. Then there was the explosion. And something in my stomach. That is all. Well, here you are. Where's the arm? I live. Private Rigaud, Captain Bertrand. Trying to make the officers do all the fighting for a change? I can see you have plenty of doctors. Do you get a bill from each one? When my wife died, I swore I had seen enough of doctors for a lifetime. <laughs> they work like groundhogs. Don't they ever see the light of day? Down here, night and day are the same. Sometimes 25 operations in 24 hours. Well, Rigo, how is the indigestion today? Now you get well, and I promise you a bottle of Bordeaux to celebrate. I bet he's been talking your ears off. <laughs> Has he told you about his daughter? Not a word. Where is your hospitality, Rigo? Men get lonesome for the sight of a beautiful woman. 
Let them see the needs. Six years old and a femme fatale. That is what the sisters in the orphanage always say. I could tell you a story. Ah, enough of your long speeches, Rigo. You are not running for premier. Now the officers are going, and you're getting some sleep. What a pretty child. Yes. I've seen many men die. But each time I think I've died a little too. But we go with so much to live for. I'm afraid I must go. Get well, Kano. Oh. This scratch doesn't belong in here. It embarrasses me. This is a surprise. How are you? I'm fine. Are you well? Oh, yes, very well. And, and the morale was never higher. I'm sending you a package in the next airport. You're sending what? A package. Soap, cigarettes, dysentery pills. Soap, cigarettes, dysentery pills. Isn't it what you want? Oh, yes, fine. But uh, I would much prefer if you would send one small monsoon. You'll have your monsoon without my help. Well, I'm glad that you're confident. I, I can't say that I am. The best barometer in the fort, uh, Lieutenant Robert, gives very little promise of hope. It's his sinuses. What? His sinuses. Oh. When they start acting up, the, the monsoon comes. By the way, Robert, how are your sinuses? <laughs> Never better, sir. I am sorry to say. See that they get worse. It's an order. Yes, sir. Darling, I have to hang up now. I'm afraid we're in for some trouble. Please, sir, what is it? Something serious? I can't say yet. Tell General Cogny I'll report to him tonight. Au revoir, darling. I love you. Goodbye, darling. I love you. Maupin and the Algerians have reached Madeleine. Captain D'Arblay has been seriously wounded. The strong point is being swarmed under six to one. Robert. Contact Madeleine, order Maupin to take charge. Tell him to abandon the strong point and fall back immediately. Yes, sir. If that monsoon holds back one day longer, those savages will outnumber us ten to one. Poor Darblay. I hope Maupin can manage. Remove Captain W at once. Contact all companies. Full evacuation of Strong Point at 1500. Sergeant, get the demolition squads out immediately. Demolition ready? Yes, sir. Forget, Madeleine. The patrol report speaks for itself, Colonel. The escape route will be closed by tomorrow. Either we evacuate Yambian Field tonight or we are finished. Completely surrounded. Yes. 
It seems to be fairly clear. Colonel, believe me, I am not being defeatist. I am being practical. Colonel, I think you should hear several communiques and cables transmitted by Hanoi. Yes. From the President of France. A unit citation, the Croix de Guerre, for every one of the 12,000 men in your command. From London, a cablegram to you, sir. From Prime Minister Sir Winston Churchill. I salute you. From Washington, D.C., a cablegram. In common with millions of my countrymen, I salute the gallantry and stamina of the commander and soldiers who are defending Gien Bien Phu. Sign, President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Watch! Watch! Sorry, sir. My sinuses. Sinuses? <laughs> Expect all troops to die at the position assigned to them, rather than to retreat one inch. This is my order of the day. The 30th of April, everyone. The 30th of April. You would think it was Christmas. Now, what's all the fuss about? What's all the fuss about? Where do you come from? Outer space? You mean you've never heard of the Cameron? What's your IQ, 34? I'll make a legionnaire of you, yes. It's 1863, see? The legions in Mexico. A French supply column is moving inland. 2,000 Mexicans set out to grab it. Who's going to stop them? One man, Captain Danjou. Captain Danjou? Captain Danjou, he says. Would you say Napoleon Bonaparte? Or would you say Marshal Foch? Yes, Danjou, a Crimean veteran with a wooden hand. A fearless man, the kind who would have crossed the Champs Elysees against the lights. He moves in between the Mexicans and our supply column. Look here. Captain Danjou and 65 legionnaires put up in the wayside inn, a place called the Cameroon, surrounded by 2,000 Mexicans. The 65 legionnaires take an oath on Danjou's wooden hand. To fight to the death. They fight all day till they are wiped out. But 580 Mexicans are also wiped out. And the French supply column gets through. That's why April the 30th. Now remove the bodies. I'm going to the wine cellar. I still don't get it. What's there to celebrate? Hober, the only similarity between you and Captain Danjou is he had a wooden hand. You got a wooden head. Ah, did you pick out some wine, sir? I'm trying to decide concentrated Bordeaux or Burgundy. Which mixes best with water? Does it make any difference? <laughs> make any difference. Really, Sergeant, this is the night of the Cameron. We must have the best vintage year. Major, have you heard from Paris? The colonel has been made brigadier general. I've got to tell him right away. Uh, Robert, wait a minute. Don't tell him yet. Save it for the Cameron dinner. Telephone Hanoi right now. Instruct them to include the colonel's two stars and some real champagne in tonight's <laughs> drop. Yes, sir. Uh, Come on, Sergeant. Excellent. 
What was that? General Giap's loudspeakers. Did you hear what they were saying? Yes. They're saying surrender or die. Surrender or become corpses. They are saying it in French, Vietnamese, Arabic, and German. Who knows, gentlemen? By morning, we may all be as famous as Captain Danjou. I'm not interested in being as famous as Captain Danjou. For all I know, Danjou was an utter fool. And we may be bigger fools. Losing our last chance to escape because of the rain. Three days of rain now, not a drop for a week. And the Reds rolling in supplies by the ton. Why do we have to depend on a monsoon? We did not depend on the monsoon, Major. We did not depend on any single thing. Except our deep faith that we are defending the right. And that by remaining in this valley, we shall be saving the lives of countless others. Precisely as Captain Danjou did at the Cameroon. 91 years ago tonight. You may be seated. Colonel, before we begin, we have a surprise for you. If you'll just wait a moment. Thank you, sir. Those pigs take it away. Friend, you're a Frenchman at last, risking your life for a bottle of champagne. <laughs> oh, sorry to keep you waiting. I was just promoted in the field. <laughs> oh. It was worth waiting for. Yeah, uh, well earned, sir. Congratulations. Gentlemen, I've been told that uh, constant fine is better for the soil than for the belly. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the some good champagne. Uh, uh, something that's <laughs> A toast to Captain Danjou, to the Cameron, to the brave at heart everywhere. And to our new general. Our new general. 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 Reporting to the General from Strong Point, Isabel. Straight ahead. I just passed two Vietnamese to the command post. They said they were from Isabel. So? There are no Vietnamese at Isabel. Command post Juno. Juno, do you hear me? 
It doesn't work. We're here to see the general. Straight down. of extraordinary courage, the order of Chevalier and the Legion of Honor. Thank you, sir. And for you, Captain Pierre Arroy, for untiring and heroic effort in the cause of France, the Medal of Honor. From each and all of the 12,000 men in Dien Bien Phu, our deepest thanks. I'm grateful, believe me. But there is one thing that would make me even more grateful. What is that? The wounded need water, sir. Their rations are almost gone. They are suffering terribly. Yes, I, I know they are suffering. We're getting all we can by air, but it is becoming more and more difficult. The only immediate source of supply is the river. And it is entirely in communist hands. To send a patrol out would be most dangerous. I'm afraid I can't ask anyone to take the risk. You needn't ask, sir. I volunteer. Do you understand the chances? I understand the need for water. I've been having my concentrated wine all day without it. <laughs> Very well, Captain. You may take a patrol out before dawn. But uh, I warn you. I've uh, just used up my last Medal of Honor. <laughs> <laughs> They're out there digging it again tonight. Let the golfers have their foxholes. We will fill them up in the morning. If we find all the holes, if we don't, They'll leave in our laps next week. Ah, well, gentlemen, enjoying the symphony of the diggers again tonight? Perhaps this will distract you. A perfume letter for you, sir. Newspapers from Paris, only two weeks old. We still have a cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> 
Picasso and the Bourse. Viva la France. Uh, two letters for Calo. Ah, save the papers when you're through. I like to read the ads and see how much money I'm saving. Well, at least we are making the front pages. An interview with our general. He tells what he thinks of General Giap. I hope General Giap doesn't read French. consolation I can offer is that you are doing it for us. My existence is just as lonely. I have not set foot out of the village, not been to Paris once. I spend my days with the old women. I scrimp and save. I go to bed early, thinking only of It says here, the Hotel George Sank is booked until August. Just as well. I'm all tied up till August anyway. And guess who else I saw during my leave in Paris? That's right, you guessed it. The morgue. I saw her at Maxime's, the opera, Les Ambassadeurs. You were wise to let Simone leave the village. After all, there is only one Paris, and it will keep her from becoming too bored. Is there something wrong, Jean? She lied to me. She's not in the village at all. Volunteer, she always said. Improve yourself, darling. For us. For us. For herself. It may be all. A misunderstanding, a mistake. A mistake, don't be crazy. She tried it a dozen times before. I just wouldn't face it. Now it's clear. Can't you see? She wanted to get rid of me. Get me off anywhere. But why? That's what I can't understand. Why? It's the money. She wanted more money, clothes, good times. She wanted my overseas allotment. She didn't know you were being sent here, Jean. I show her. I show that tramp. If I die, I show her so she'll never forget. Of course, you can change the beneficiary of your insurance at any time. You need only sign the new form and I'll have it notarized. But under the circumstances, it may not be enough. What do you mean? You make the change, but what if it never gets out of here? What if it is destroyed by the Reds? It is not legal unless it reaches Hanoi. Oh, I see. Wait. I almost forgot. Two helicopters are coming in tonight. We are going to remove some of the critically wounded. We are also sending out one bag of dispatches. I could include this if it's important. There is nothing more important to me. Very well, we'll try. Now then, who is your present beneficiary? Age, residence, relationship. Madame Simone Callot, age 29. 
Paris. Wife. And your new beneficiary, the one who is replacing her. Do you remember Private Rigaud? He had a little daughter. Denise. That's right. Denise Rigaud. She lives in Lyon. Six years old. Orphan. Write it down. Let's take the water from the middle of the river. Went through his foot. Let's get out of here. Name on one of those helicopters. Wouldn't do any good. They hit one of the helicopters. Blew it up. One's getting away. Look at it. the devil did he find so funny? Any sign of Major Bonnet? Not yet. Should be here by now. They radioed he was taking a shortcut past Bald Head Hill. 
doesn't arrive soon, we'll be out of ammunition. Someone's trying to get here in a great hurry. The Reds broke through. They have taken Ball Head Hill. Do you mean they're controlling the main road? They're looking right down on it. That's what happened to Bonnet. He walked straight into the ambush. Get two tanks, flamethrowing squad, motor crews, anything we can spare. I'm not going to see these men die. I've had enough of posthumous medals. Uh, no company has surrounded the exit. Well, somebody around here is going to show a little sense. I am through wasting lives. Eh? As they were to cease fire. Right, we, sir. we can't give ourselves up to them. Why cease not? Fire. They will treat us well, and we we'll live to fight again another cease day. Fire. Cease fire. Action. Get the men out. Get them to the fort. Where is Bonnet? What are you going to do with them? What do you think? Now get going. Uh, 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 what are you doing? I'm taking you to Giselle. Uh, you... You will be sorry? I am liable to live. I will be sorry. But if you die here, I'll be sorrier. Your wife will think you are a hero. If I keep you alive, you'll always be a heel. I'm keeping you alive, Major. Uh, Sorry, sir. It is hard to keep awake. 
After 55 nights? I should think so. Here, have another Benzedrine. How is it out there? I guess they have to sleep too. I guess they do. Well, I'd better grab another 40 winks and take that Benzedrine. Junon, Junon Can you hear me We're abandoning Adrien Lisette has fallen. We're pulling back. out of ammunition. But the men want to fight. They're going hand to hand. 
shall fight to the end. Au revoir, General Cogny. Vive la France. hammered into a thousand yards the circle, sir. Well, it took them 56 days to do it. You don't exactly look as if you've been on an outing in the Bois de Boulogne. If I may quote an old French saying, sir, if you think we look bad, you should see them. The only strong point left is Isabel. Five kilometers to the south of the Captain Bruyard. It appears to be surrounded. We've lost radio contact. I have two sealed orders here for Captain Pluin. I want you to take them to him. I don't know if you can make it, but uh, with this melee outside, you might succeed. I want the three of you to go at once. If you don't mind, sir, I might be more useful in the final defense of the fort. Couldn't Lieutenant Maupin and Lieutenant Femme manage it together? These messages are not very heavy. I said the three of you. Au revoir, gentlemen. Au revoir, Général. The general wants you to continue to Hanoi, if you can make it. He wants this complete report on the 56 days of Dian Bien Phu delivered to the French general staff. More than that, he wants some survivor to tell France, the entire world, of the last hours of the fort. We'll keep our little red friends out there busy for the rest of the day. That should give you some chance. And you proceed northeast over the Thai mountains. I wish we could help you, Captain. You can. Get to Hanoi. The dead down there have much to tell. You tell it for them. Got a chance, no use. Hello, hello, hello. He is a leader of the Thai tribe. They are our friends. 
They're looking for survivors of Jian Biang Phu. Hula, hula. They will save us. They will take us to Hanoi. We must leave at once. Tell them we are ready. Hula. Hello. Strange the things you remember after violence and death. And yet, perhaps, not so strange. I remember a bright morning long ago when I was a schoolboy in Paris and the teacher read Seneca aloud. I remember what Seneca had written about a group of Romans who died bravely in an ambush. The 300 Romans were not defeated. They were only killed.